and get started with who we have and the rest will join us. If not, they can catch it on the rebound. Oh no, I know I know Miss Kennedy is on here because you know she the one kind of threw my name in the pot. Where's Miss Kennedy at? Oh well, she might be late then. Oh. I don't know. Well, for the ones that are here, yes, I love your cup. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, boss lady. All right, for the ones that are here, uh, it's uh, Tuesday night nuggets again. Uh, for um, because we're trying to just wrap it up for the year, so we had to squeeze Miss Tammy in because she had an emergency last week. So we are glad that she's here with us, safe. Um, I'm just going to read her bio, professional serial, I love that, <laughs> business owner from Tampa Bay area, she's a licensed realtor, 20 years, owner of a commercial janitorial service, 15 years, uh, certified mobile signing agent for 13 years, um, and she also holds multiple inde independent contract licenses, so she is, that cup fits you well, boss lady. <laughs> Thank you for being with us this Thank evening. You. Thank you so much. So, um, Miss Tammy, take it away. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the awesome introduction. Um, I just want to say that it's just an honor to um, have had the privileges to come down and meet Miss Liz in person. Like um, Tamika said, I am actually from Florida, born and raised here in Florida. And I met Miss Liz about almost two years ago. And um, it was just an honor to fly down and, and, and sit in her uh, training class. Kind of motivated me a little bit to start my um, uh, notary training business here in the Tampa Bay area. So I did come down to kind of shadow her, shadow uh, Miss Liz and it was an awesome experience there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. And uh, like Tamika said, I was uh, born and raised here in Florida. I'm the oldest of seven kids. I have Here's one son. Community. <laughs> okay, I have one son, um, and I actually had him while I was in high school, and so when I left high school, I um, attended the University of South Florida here in Tampa, where I earned my bachelor's degree in criminology, and um, then I went on to work with the uh, Department of Corrections here um, in the Tampa Bay area, and so I just want to talk a little bit about the reasons why, you know, I have, and, you know, hopefully some of the, the listeners have, um, multiple streams of income. And basically because um, I feel that having multiple streams of income, it provides a safety net for you because um, that nine to five job may not just get it. And as we all know, job stands for just over broke. Right? Oh, I, like I never heard that. <laughs> so let's just, so let's, you got that Miss Liz? Just I got broke. it girl. I <laughs> I'm going to use that. <laughs> so um, again, we can't always depend on that nine to five. So it's always important that we have um, something to um, provide extra income in case we get laid off, um, especially like now during the pandemic. Um, a lot of people have lost their jobs during you know, the pandemic. Um, you know, jobs can get outsourced. So if you laid off, you're going to need some type of income to keep you going for a couple of months, right? So I believe the multiple stream of income uh, provides a safety net for you. Um, they also say, you know, don't the wise saying, I'll say, don't always put all your eggs in one basket, right? So we need to yeah. diversify our um, financial portfolio as well. Okay. So that's why, that's like some of the reasons why, and as I talk more about my career, you can kind of see where these nuggets, I've used these in my um, business endeavor. And so multiple screens of income also provides more uh, financial security for us uh, because um, let's say if our job is providing um, um, income to pay our bills, if we have multiple ends, multiple streams of income that can um, provide for a savings account, a safety net, right? And, um, and like I say, I've used that in that instance as well. I use my, one of my multiple streams of income as um, safety net, I use it for travel, um, and um, then it also can help pay down debt. So if you have, you know, a lot of debt, you can use your um, extra means of income to pay down debt. So we know that paying down your debt is going to increase your help to increase your credit score because your um, your um, debt. To, um, so your ratio is um, is lowered if you can pay down your debt sooner. So again, we can use multiple streams of income in that instance as well. Um, emergency funds, I believe, and also have an emergency fund. So if you have, um, you know, extra income, you can use um, for emergency funds. I use it for vacation. For those who 
know me or don't know me, I'm an international travel traveler. I've traveled all over the world. Um, and I've used my extra income to do that. And people always say, Tim, you're always going somewhere. You're always traveling. But I, I save for it and I budget for it. So then therefore I can afford to go to China for two weeks. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can afford to go off to Rome and Paris and London. I've been all that those places. Um, uh, Hawaii. I've been all those places. I mean, you know, I love to travel. Fuji is on my list. Okay. Um, and again, I use a lot of my um, extra means of income um, to support my lifestyle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and so in, in, in multiple screens of income also allows us to be more creative. Like, and I'll talk a little bit about side hustles because it's a lot of those side hustles, but I'm mainly talking about um, streams of income. Um, and then also if we're earning extra money, we're busy earning, so we're spending less. So earn versus spend, right? Because if we're out there hustling every day, that's less money we're spending, more money we're saving. So, um, and then um, again, it, it allows us to take more risks. Um, I just believe in, um, for me, a safety net for my savings is I, I have to have $10,000. That's just my safety net. So I just set a budget for myself. And it gets below that, I get nervous. <laughs> so, um, and I just want to just want to bring up those little nuggets because um, when I go back to talk about my career with the Department of Corrections, um, like I said, I worked with them. That was my last career um, job, and I have not worked on a job in 18 years. I have not worked in corporate America, so I worked for myself for the last 18 years. And um, um, I actually, um, when I was with the Department of Corrections. I started to get a negative review after my immediate supervisor learned that I had my first business. Mm -hmm. So um, I purchased my, let's go back a little bit. I purchased my first home about the age of 25. So that's when I took my interest in real estate. And so um, I used my first home to purchase my first business. And so when I talk to people about real estate and that's one of my passion, that's my passion is real estate. And then I, uh, okay, <laughs> okay. And um, I, I, I see you, Miss Regina. So my passion is real estate. And like I said, I own my first home. And then um, actually when I graduated from University of South Florida, I actually went to um, the military. So I went to the military, pay off my student loans. So I don't, I don't believe in a lot of that. And I'm going to talk a little bit on how God has blessed me to use a lot of resources to, um, to, he just been a blessing to me. And I'm just going to share some of those nuggets with you as well. So, um, I went to the military and then, um, I purchased my first home. Like I said, I have one son. So I had a four bedroom house, little house. I paid like $50,000 for back then. So that 50,000 is significant and I'll talk about it later. And so I, um, I um, purchased my first home. Then I was in the reserve talking about, man, I got this big house. I should start a home daycare center. And so one of my girlfriends heard about it. We heard me talking about it. So one day she saw an ad in the paper, ad in the paper. And so she said, Tim, there's a daycare for sale. I'm like, really? Let's go look at it. And so when I tell you that I am a people's person and I believe that God just blessed me um, and people just see the spirit that I have and they just, they just give me stuff, right? And so she said, well, Tim, let's go look at the daycare. I'm like, cool. So we went over, looked at the daycare center. Um, and that, um, let's say the lady wanted $25,000. i am like, we ain't got no $25,000. So we went over. I'm a negotiator as well. Okay. And so I said, hey, lady, we'll pay you $20,000 for your business. We had no $20,000. We had no 20 nothing. <laughs> but we did have a house. So I'm like, okay. So I'm like, okay. So I said, well, hey. My colleague at the time, my um, military buddy, I said, okay, so you got a house and I got a house. So I tell you what, I'm going to go call my realtor and my mom would come and say, I need to get some money to buy this business. So that's what I did. I went, called the mortgage company. I took out some equity out of my first home. And so she took out some out of her first home. And so that's how we bought our first business. So, and, and so when I talk about um, my business endeavor and I talk about my love for real estate, I always tell the story on how to use your home as leverage.
to start other multiple businesses. So that's how I started my career in childcare. Um, and I did 17 years in childcare. I've owned four childcare centers and I, I've made a lot of money in childcare. So I've just retired out of childcare in like 2017. But I took my love for real estate and purchased my first home. I used that equity to buy my first business. Okay. And so there from there, um, like I said, my supervisor learned that I owned a child care center. So he was an Italian and he didn't like that. So then he started giving me negative reviews. I'm like, oh, okay, that's it. So then I went in. I, so uh, he wanted me to violate people on my case level. I'm like, I can't, I can't violate them. Why am I violating them? So I, I actually resigned from the Department of Correction. And so he told me the day I left the company, good luck to you. And I'm like, I don't need luck. I got God on my side. And I have never went back to a corporate America. So again, I had a, a, a stream of income to support my living when I left my corporate job. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> and so from there, um, I actually, I actually saw an ad in a paper for um, a janitorial business. Now let's go back, mind you. I don't, I don't really don't like kids, but I just, <laughs> but because the business opportunity presented itself, and I used my skills and what I had, which was a home, and I took the equity out. I purchased the business, and I did 17 years in the business, and I was really good at it. Um, like, <laughs> so, um, but I don't really like kids. So then I found my janitorial business. I actually found an ad in the paper. And it was talking about dinner. I said, hmm, let me just look at this. And so I like, okay, the price looked good. I didn't know anything about cleaning. I don't even like to clean. <laughs> so I actually, um, I met the young lady um, and she had taken ill. It was an African-American uh, African um, lady that was selling her janitorial business. So I called her up. I'm like, I can come meet you. She, so I did go and meet her. It was late in the evening. And so we talked. And again, like I said, God gives me favor. So I met the young lady. She said, I say, well, I can buy your business. And she say, you know, I'm going to sell it to you. I love your spirit. I love your character. I'm going to sell you my business. I'm like, I can give you a deposit. She said, I don't need a deposit. She said, I'm going to sell you my business. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, so we left that day. Later that week, we met and we actually um, um, exchanged funds. Um, and then she sold me her janitorial business. And so that's how I started my janitorial business in 2005. And I still have that business today. And it's very lucrative for me. Um, and it's, 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 it's easy. Um, I, like I said, I started it and um, I worked it a little bit in the beginning, but now I actually don't have to go in the field because I have people work for me. Um, so, and then part of the janitorial business, I would tell my sister, I said, hey, you wanna do this business with me? Oh, no, I don't wanna do that, I don't wanna do that. And so I'm like, okay, cool. So I just paid for it and bought it myself. So one day my sister go out to work with me. And um, so I, we had to go clean the office and it was just a little small office, blah, blah, blah. And so she said, that's all you got to do. I'm like, yeah. She said, well, I should have went in. I said, no, 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 no. It's too late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, because trust me, I don't like to clean, but I have a janitorial business that I've done for 15 years. And I love it because one, I provide jobs for other people. You know, I provide income from other people and, um, and then it, it pays for my, my, my big pretty house. <laughs> so uh, again see parts of that house it's gorgeous your floors are just adorable <laughs> thank you thank you but again that's another uh, uh multiple stream of income is my janitorial business and it's quite easy i actually started as a franchise so i started as a franchise and they have them all over yeah they have them they have them there in texas and so it's just a matter of putting up some funds and then um, if you do it a franchise and then they go out and find the business for you so it's not necessarily that you have to work the business. Like I said, I have 10 people that work for me and I have some that have been working for me for eight years. So the same people. So I pay them well and they, yeah. Tammy, yes? um, I, I should have asked you this in the beginning. Um, for the format of your presentation, um, do you want people to hold their questions till the end or can they um, ask questions? I see a comment. Um, in the in the uh, in the chat, and I know you read it because you acknowledged Regina, but um, 
So do you want them to hold their ask, questions till the no. end or can they just jump yeah, in and they can ask, ask questions? Question. Yeah, they can ask questions. Because uh -huh. Regina said, wow, that's amazing. 18 years as an entrepreneur, were you scared to step out on your own? No, Regina, and that's what I that's what I was saying is that when I left the Department of Corrections, um, like I said, it was a new it was a new business um, when I um, did the uh, a child care center. So, and I had a partner at the time, and we kind of split the responsibility. She covered the the, the business in, in the earlier part of the day. So when I left the state, I went and closed down the business in 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 the evening. But no, I didn't. I stepped out on faith. So I stepped out on faith, and no, I was like I told my supervisor at the time. He said, good luck. And I told him I didn't need luck. I had God on my side. And when I tell you, God has blessed. He has blessed. Like I said, that was my first small center. And that one was kind of licensed for for, um, for like 25 kids. And so I, I, I gradually um, increased over the years until the last center that I owned, it was a license for 103 kids. Oh, wow. And so I grew from 25 kids to 103 kids over the career of my uh, child care industry. So like I say, God's blessed me because I, I stepped out on faith. So no, I wasn't nervous. And 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 like I was telling one of my girlfriends, I think she's on um, Jennifer Lee, is um I'm kind of a risk taker and everybody's really not like me, but I kind of take risks. And so, I mean, you just have to step on on faith. So if there's something that you feel that you want to do and you have a passion for it, you know, you got you to gotta try it, you know, otherwise you don't know if you're going to succeed or fail. Oh, yeah. So no, but yeah, I'm, I'm open for questions, please. You know, yeah. Um, so um, so we talked about my, um, uh, the, the child care center. We talked about um, how I got started in the janitorial business. Um, anybody have any questions about that? No. Nope. Um, and I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, so with your janitorial business, I must have missed this part. Did you go through a company and like purchase a franchise? How did how did that work? I probably missed it. I'm sorry. Yes, I did. I um, um like I say, um the young lady, she had posted in just a small local um paper and I, I found it in a local paper and she was part of a franchise. So I bought her franchise. So yes, so I started as, as a franchise, however, and then um I increased. Like I said, I increased it like my first year. Um, I, it's been, yeah, my first year I increased from what she had. I kind of added on to the franchise and I bought in segments and I added on. So now that I'm good at it, I actually build my own accounts as well. Oh. Yeah, yeah but I still do have like five accounts from that franchise from 2005. So I've been serving some of the office, like five of them for the last 15 years, but I've learned how to add on. So, yeah. So you can do franchise or, you know, if you're a people's person and you know how to market, you can, you can start your own janitory business. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for that. Um, so um, we talked about the daycare um, in a janitor. So then I um, got my notary commission in 2008. So I became a notary. I'm not going to talk a lot about that because that's Miss Liz's specialty. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Go ahead. You talk about it. Talk about it. <laughs> so, yeah, so I started my notary career in like 2005, and I really didn't do much with it in the beginning. And then I just I just got my notary and just let it sit on the shelf for a while. And I'm like, okay. So then, then I said, hmm. So then I started inquiring about how can I make um, uh, a stream of income using my notary. And so, and then I started doing, um, I became a certified signing agent. Then I started doing, um, um, I kind of learned on my own as I, you know, went along with that. And so my notary business is also very lucrative for me. Um, so I do quite well in that as well. Um, so, um, like I said, I did come down to Miss, because I was giving that free training, Miss Liz. Remember I told you, I was giving, yeah. I was giving people training for free and I, I I, I, yeah. So then when I when I learned about Miss Liz Channel, I'm like, uh-uh, I'm going to start giving away free information. <laughs> they got to pay me for my knowledge. But I trained several people, like at my church and and just just even today. Today, I, was, I had a cousin that moved down back from Pennsylvania. She was asking me about notary. And I'm like, well, I can show you how I make $100 an hour. And I literally make $100 an hour because I'm only there for 45 minutes. <laughs> And so, but I tell them, you know, if you're not going to put in the work, don't spend your time or your money because it's, it's a hustle. 
you know, this notary business, it's a hustle game. So I do well because I hustle. Um, and um, um, so I, I, I've tried a few people, but not as much, but I start giving out free information. And like some of the notary groups, they'll ask me for lists and where you get all these lists. I'm like, oh, that's going to cost you. I can't just give you a list of people. To, you know, <laughs> I do give out some free stuff, but there's one guy, he just kept asking me, I'm going to give you a little, I'm going to give you a little nuggets, but don't keep asking me because now I'm going to have to charge you. That's you know? right. <laughs> so yeah, because we do we we do give away a lot of free information, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but at the same time, uh, you know, we've got our time is valuable, mm -hmm. uh -huh. so Absolutely. we do have to charge. Yeah. Okay. So it says, um, do you get subs to work for your gym? Oh no, I I actually have um I have ten ninety nine and I have W two employees that works in my cleaning business. Yeah. So actually, when I actually get off this Zoom tonight at nine, I'm going to jump in my car and I'm going to train somebody at nine o'clock to clean a new office for me. So, yeah. So I go out and I train them. Um, and then, uh, but I do work for my, I do work myself sometimes. I had a gentleman on Saturday night. He told me like, why are you going out to work? It's a Saturday. I say, well, let me explain to you mm -hmm. the nature of my business. Since I am the owner, I have to go if someone don't show up. So I dare you ask me, why am I going to work on a Saturday night? Uh, because I have to support my lifestyle. So therefore I got to go out and work, you know? So, you know, being a business owner, it have its advantages and have its disadvantages, right? Um, and so I, I want to show, I want to show Miss Z something. Tammy, so, I have a question. Uh, yes, ma'am. This is kind of a funny though. Do you use Fabuloso? I do not. No. <laughs> no. Fabuloso is for smell. It's not for clean. Oh. And I do have some, and I have some people tell me like, oh, I don't, it don't smell good in here. I'm like, and so I said, I can get some Fabuloso, but if I use Fabuloso, they think it's clean. I use, I use Odaban. Mm -hmm. Cause it kills more germs. <laughs> I turned to look because I've got Odaban. Odaban. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's what I use. Yeah, Fabuloso is for smell. It don't clean. But I want it. So we're gonna. So in, in speaking. So to answer the question to Miss Keisha, um, I do. Um, I have people that work for me, and um, and so Christmas time, I throw big. I have a big dinner. Oh. Everyone get a Christmas bonus. And so I mean, they, you know, and I did that for my um my preschool too. I had teachers that worked for me for like fifteen years. And so every Christmas, they was waiting on Christmas time. I would take the I would take the whole stuff out to dinner. They would order wine, and my bill would be like, but it didn't matter because I it was my time to show my appreciation to them. That's right. And that's why people work for me a long time. Yeah. So in speaking of my notary uh, business, th this is my shirt. Hey, I should have worn my shirt tonight. <laughs> Damn it! I should have put my shirt on. And it says my signature um, makes sense. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, and I did send Miss Liz one of these shirts, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. so you should, Tammy. Why do you remind me to wear my shirt tonight? <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Um. Oh. Huh. Huh. Um. My computer said battery running low and I meant to get my charger, but so I'm going to charge up my, my, my computer. Um, so we was talking about the janitorial business. I talked a little bit about the uh, child care industry. And then I also want to talk about, um, let's talk about the child care. For me, even when I started my first child care center and my last child care center, I had business partners. Mm. Oh, that's not a good thing. <laughs> no. No, and so those were those were not good experiences. I, like my last my last center where I said I had 103 kids, um, I went in. That center was um, it was priced at 1.2 million dollars, and so I had to go in and kind of negotiate. And because the the couple, it was an older elderly couple that was retiring and getting out of business, and I had to go in. And they said that Tammy, the only reason we would sell our childcare center if you stayed to run the center. So again, that's another instance where God just give me favor with people. And so we, I kind of negotiate that business to like $850,000. And I had a partner at the time. So it, it didn't last. I mean, we was really making mega bucks until when it got, when it got hard, she didn't want to be a partner anymore, put it like mm -hmm. that. 
So I personally don't do anything else with partnerships. All my businesses, I, I, I'm a sole owner, sole CEO. Partnerships just don't work for me. I mean, they have not worked. So did you have to buy her out? I did. Yeah. So I, but I actually offered her to stay. She oh. said, no, she said, oh no, you stay. The teachers love you. The parents love you. Everybody love you. You stay. So I end up, yeah, I end up buying her and her husband out. Yeah. And um, so, and then I just stayed on with the business for another five years and then I sold it. And um, so I was able to get an SBA loan um, with, um, with that particular business. So I got, I was able to get an SBA loan. So, but in order to get the SBA loan, I had to have money in the bank because you have to put it down. So, so, and speaking of that, I used, again, my passion for real estate because I'm also a real estate investor. Mm -hmm. meaning that I buy property and I sell property. Okay. Um, so it, part of my funds to buy into that center, I, I, um, like I said, I bought my first house for $50,000 and then I bought one through three, four more houses in that same neighborhood all for $50,000. Okay. So again, I tell people to, um, you cannot go wrong with real estate because you're either going to buy, sell, or invest in real estate. So um, I bought a couple of properties in my neighborhood and I turned around and sold them. Like I said, I sold one. I bought it for 50. Two years later, I sold it for 150. Nice. Yeah. And so um, I'm so. Oh! What happened? Oh, no. I guess that. Her, her computer told her her battery was dying. <laughs> We'll give, she'll be back. Tamika, why don't you have EJ come tell us some jokes while we're waiting for her? Oh, his jokes are not appropriate. They would, they would take my mom card. Oh. Mm -mm. No. Okay, I'm, I'm going to tell the one that had me chuckling. Um, I'm probably going to get it wrong. Uh, you know, he get these off the internet. This is my 10 year old He's grandson. 11 year old grandson, you guys. He said, this naked man got into a taxi cab and the taxi driver was staring at him. And he said to the taxi driver, why are you staring at me? Do you see something funny? And the taxi driver said, no, I'm just wondering where you're going to get my fare from. <laughs> okay, y'all turn the mics on and laugh at that joke. <laughs> I think it, he said, I'm wondering, he didn't say, where are you going to get my fare from? He said, where are you carrying my fare? Where are you I knew I'd mess it up. <laughs> but let me tell you, that was funny to me. And Tamika, she talked about that poor little child telling these, these dumb jokes. And he tells these dumb jokes. And some of them are very, very, I laugh my head off. Yeah. And so she doesn't understand. He gets a little stuff from the internet, so. On but, his TikToks and stuff. Uh huh. But I knew I'd mess it up. You 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 came close. You came I came close. close. Yes. And that's he told me about uh, what five six of them. That's the only one I remember. Thank God. Ah! Thank God. Yeah. For small, thank God for small miracles. Yeah, because they were pretty corny, I, yeah, and I know they nice. were. But you just laughed your little head off. I did. I did. He was funny. You going to turn your camera on? Oh, I forgot. I should have had the camera on when I was telling the joke, huh? Yeah, so we could see you going like this. I'm sure you were doing this. trying to. I was trying it. to remember it. Yeah. Yeah. Tang come bear, find that charger and come on back. I got questions for her. I know, I know that part of it. You were, you were very interested. I was. Anybody else got any news? How's your week been? Um, what have you been doing? Well, some of these folks, I don't know. I guess I should just tell them. Maggie, do have a, Maggie, Bonnie, Jennifer, there she Erica. It's Erica. There, Tammy's coming back. There she is. She's connecting. It's Erica, not Erica. Erica. Hi, nice to meet you. You too. I'm sorry I mispronounced your name. 
<laughs> it's okay. I get it all the time. It's a reason ah. Africa is everything but Erica. Oh, Erica. Uh, well, welcome back, Tammy. I, you know, I'm glad you're back because I was starting to tell jokes. And, and... Tammy, thank you for saving us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I left off talking about real estate investment. I would love um, to share more with you guys. Um, that That's really my passion is investing in real estate. Um, and that's why I've made the... Um, the most of my money as far as multiple streams of income. Somebody said me too. <laughs> I have yes, a question. Please. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so what are your plans or do you have any plans for when the moratorium uh, lifts? Like, are you like planning a strategy? Are you going to invest? Because you know what's going to happen. Okay, well, at the present time, um, I actually... Um, I took and um, I invested some funds, um, my, some of my emergency, no, not my emergency. I took some funds out of my um, uh, investment funds um, and I purchased some land like two years ago. Okay. And so I purchased land back in 2007 and 2000, no, 2017 and 18. I built property back then. And so the market kind of tanked and then I kind of got out of the, construction business. And so I bought some land about two years ago because I knew I was going to get back in it. So to make a long story short, um, they just broke ground. So they're going to start construction um, in December. So I have four new properties that's going to be built in 2021. Okay. So that's my um, construction folio, my personal investment. Um, I'm also, like I say, I sell, invest, and in, in, um, sell, buy, and invest in real estate. But right now I'm looking to um, purchase some more land. And um, I, I know that works because it worked for me back in 2017. I did really well with it. So, yeah. So I have to- Now, are you houses. building these houses to to sell or to keep in your portfolio? No, I'm, I'm building them to sell. So what I did was, like I say, I bought some property and then I partner, I partner with a general contractor. So, and so, and the properties, like I said, I bought four adjacent lots, so they're all together. And so I was looking for financing and I couldn't get it at the time. So my general contractor said, hey, you got a good piece of property there with you. I'm like, okay, cool. He said, let's talk. I'm like, okay, cool. So then I, I learned to use the, I, I learned the OPM. So I'm okay, using OPM money. to be a, yeah, uh-huh. So basically I own the land and he's going to build the properties for me. So I don't, I didn't invest any of my money in these deals. So he's building the homes for me and then we're going to sell them. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I got to put no money in. I get my money out and then I get a portion of the, of the property. Sound like a good deal to me. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. So do um, you ever, do, do you ever do anything? And I think that when uh, Tamika mentioned the moratorium is lifted it's unfortunate that sometimes we're able to benefit from someone else's uh, misfortune. Once this, uh, we're out of this corona, of course, a whole lot of people are going to be foreclosed on. Mm -hmm. um, and especially even with the tax liens, where here in Texas, tax liens are big. Uh, I mean, the amount of money that people make on tax liens you know, but you know the property mm -hmm. because it, it, once it goes delinquent, it can get as high as twenty six percent. So you know, even if you just get your your money back, if they are able to save the property, mm -hmm. you, know, you still get that twenty six percent interest mm -hmm. for however long you know you're holding on to the property during their redemption period. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, tax liens were. Uh, big at the beginning of the year because that's the time here in Texas that that was happening or you know that they would do the the tax foreclosures mm -hmm. um, but uh, once once we're out of this COVID of course those tax liens will be sold uh, you know a lot of properties Mika is that where you were going with that with the with the tax right. lien foreclosures uh, and the mortgage foreclosures 
yeah i was seeing if she was but she already got something else in the pipeline <laughs> but yeah i was yeah well, that's where i was going with the foreclosures and people be selling them dirt cheap just to... but that's not now you have to also keep in mind about a foreclosure it's not true oftentimes misconception that if it's a foreclosed property that you can get it for less that's not necessarily true. The lender is going to try and sell those properties at market value. Mm -hmm. The only time you really get a quote deal is uh, perhaps if the property is in disarray or if it needs a lot of repairs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you may get a property that's $50,000, but then if you've got to put a hundred in it, uh, to make it sellable, then it, it's not, you, you got it cheap, but you got to gotta do a lot of work in it. So it's a misconception that foreclosed properties are cheap because they're not necessarily true. cheap. And that is true, actually, because I just had one of my um, clients called me and say, Tammy, I found this um, pre-foreclosure property. And so he was asking me, how does it work? And, and I'm like, and I explained exactly what Ms. Liz said. I say, it's not necessary that you're going to get the property cheap because it says foreclosure, because the, the bank is going to go in, they're going to do a BPO on the property to see what the market value is, because they're going to try to get as much money out as possible. So I right. just had to explain that to someone probably about an hour ago. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, yeah. yeah, so that is true. Um, so, but I, to, to me, I have never um, did any um, tax liens, but I knew they do exist um, as far as, you know, people going down and and I know that's a, uh, people use that as a mean of um, um, a multiple streams of income. Cause like Ms. Liz say, they make money on the interest. And, you know, hopefully the people don't, if they don't redeem them, then they, they still make money um, on the interest. But I've never done that because this, that's a big business here in Tampa. And, and they be down there like vultures where they used to be on the, on the courtyard steps. And I just right. keep right. up with them. So I just say, I, I got this model. I stay in my lane. Right. <laughs> So I stay in my lane. I know what works for me. And yeah. And so, but I'm more on the new construction because I like first time home buyers. Like I say, my heart is like, you know, teaching and, and, and lifting my people up. So if I can help a new, you know, a young family as a first time home buyer. Um, so that's what I, I specialize in. So I build homes and sell them to hopefully um, first time home buyers, single moms and things like that. So, and like I say, the properties that I bought when I'm right now, I'm going to build on starting in December. That's the same neighborhood I bought my first home and raised my son. So mm -hmm. they did a big story on how a business owner returned to the neighborhood to build homes. So they did a big article on me for that. Um, you have a yeah. question in the chat. Do okay. you do any wholesaling? Um, no, 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 I don't do that. Um, Oh, I saw that. No. Um, so, but I, I have done some flips. So I have done some remodels. So I've done some of that. And again, I was able to do that because I had that emergency safety funds over there. As my member, we talked about having the little safety nets, a little extra money put aside for emergencies. And so I was able to um, take that fund out again, take my money out again, and I went and bought a house and we rehabbed it, me and a, one of my, another real estate buddy. And then uh, we only had to do like remodel two bathrooms and we sold that house in like three months and I was able to pull my money back out and we made profit. So I have rehabbed some homes as well. Mm -hmm. um, insurance license. I hold, um, I hold insurance license. I have my um, life insurance and health and annuity. So I, I have insurance with the, uh, Primerica, and that was really easy because you can go and take their class for free. They'll pay for you to get your license for free as long as you work with them for one year. Mm. So I do hold my um, um, life, health, and annuity insurance with Primerica. And then you just I, you just do life and health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just do life and health. Yes. Is Primerica the only insurance company you work with? Well, I just actually, I just, like I said, I had to do a year with them. So I just finished that year in October. So yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to look for a new firm. I also do, um, I'm also licensed with Great Western. They do um, like pre-needs, like pre-funeral um, needs for insurance, mm -hmm. like for people that really can't get insurance, but they do like a, um, a pre-burial needs insurance. 
So um, that's a that's a big thing too. Insurance is really big because now now let me ask you. I'm sorry. Uh, let's yeah. stay on the pre needs for a minute. Now you know pre needs is not just for people who can't afford who can't get insurance. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No, it because it, uh, it, it's like planning. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I have a I have I have I've already done my pre needs. Mm -hmm. I got yeah. everything done. So when I die, ain't nobody got to be trying to take all the money. <laughs> and I've already set out everything that I want to have done. Mm -hmm. However, my question is: so, do are you are you currently doing pre needs? Um, I I have the, I have license to do them. I just have not. I mean, I've trained to do it with Great Western Insurance, um, but I, I just have not sold any policies for that. But I, I asked. To do it. I asked because I did have um, my lady, the mm -hmm. one who took care of my pre needs. I'd asked her to come on and do um, something on the pre-needs mm -hmm. uh, for the group because mm -hmm. it's something that a lot of people don't like to talk about, Yeah, but yeah. it's a smart thing to do is mm -hmm. to have everything already set up mm -hmm. so that when you die, people will get emotional and then they go to the funeral home and spend all the money. That's right. You know, when you don't need to do that, you're, you're already dead. So just go ahead, go whatever, you know, have your little reception and go on home. But people end up, you know, paying $20,000 for a gold plated casket. For yeah. what? Yes. Oh no, they get horse, they get horse and buggy now. I'm like, yeah, that's a waste of money. So people need to understand the importance of that pre needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But she hasn't had time to come on and do anything with us, obviously, because in COVID, she's extremely busy. Right. But I thought if you were doing that, you, you, could, you could give us a, come on and give us a lesson on why you need to do pre-needs. I can't do that. We'll set that up for 2021. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about public adjusting public adjusting license. I do, I do hold public adjuster license too. What's yeah, that? That's for insurance. I'm a oh, public okay, adjuster okay, okay. for insurance, for insurance. Oh, an adjuster. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Public adjuster license. And again, I stumbled on that career because I had a girlfriend that said, Hey, Tammy, they're going to pay you $2,500 um, a week. I'm like doing what? And so, and so um, I, I was actually in a notary signing when she told me so, I, so they had a meeting at the hotel here in Tampa. And I'm like, okay, so when I finish this signing, I'm going to run over there. And, and I did that. But by the time I got to the hotel, ladies, that was too late. She said, well, if you want to do it, you have to go to um, uh, Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama. I got to go to Alabama. She said, well, if you want to make the money, you got to drive to Alabama. And it was, a, it was a hurricane like three years ago coming through Florida. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I guess I'll go to Alabama. So then I call my friends up. I call my cousin like, Hey, they say they're gonna pay us twenty five hundred dollars a week. Y'all want to make some money? They say, yeah, we're gonna. So I say, okay, I'm leaving Florida midnight. Y'all better get in the car. So we was four deep, four deep, leaving Florida, going to Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> uh, like, okay, so I rented a car. We drove to Alabama all night. Got there, and um, so it's a very. I don't, don't want to disclose the name, but we went in the the insurance carrier. They trained us like two days there in Birmingham, Alabama. They sent us back to Florida. They gave us an emergency license. Like during yeah. the hurricane season, they give emergency license for adjusters. And it's really big in Texas. A lot of the companies are in Texas, actually. Yeah. And yeah. so and so they gave us an emergency license and they and then they came back and say, okay, then you can go work in Orlando. I like, cool, that's right up the street from my house. So they say, okay, we want you to be um gonna do auto insurance. I'm like, I don't know nothing about adjusting no car. <laughs> And so they say, okay. So then they sent us out to the to the salvage yard and they like, okay, we're gonna learn today. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so they give us a clipboard, a camera. And so I learned how to uh, you know, I learned what a, a deck a deck lid was. I'm like, what's a deck lid? That means the hood of the car. I'm like, oh, okay then. <laughs> so I learned to be a public adjuster and it was very lucrative too. Um, and so we sat there in the junkyard for like 10 hours a day, just waiting on the cars to come in. They paid us really well to do that. And um, so I did, um, so we got an emergency license like 2017. So after that, I actually came back and got my adjuster's license through the insurance school here in Florida. So I was able to, I have my Florida adjuster's license 
And if you get your adjuster license in your home state of Texas, and so I have license in Texas too. So now I have licenses in 10 different states. And because I have my home state license, I was only, I only had to pay for the other states. Like Texas is only $50. So I hold multiple uh, public adjusters license. So let's say when the storm came in Louisiana, they called me up um, like four, two months ago, called me up to actually work the storm that hit um, Louisiana. And I was able to work that storm because I had a Louisiana adjuster's license. You don't have to live in that state to have an adjuster's license in that state. Okay. So I, I have license in Texas, Louisiana, Georgia, North Carolina. So, so I have them in the major states, like, you know, when the storms either hit Georgia, North Carolina. So I have all those major states. And it pays quite well. So like I, I was kind of injured. I had an injury to my foot. So that worked out well for me um, back in September, October, because I didn't have to leave my house. I, I kind of cut back on my notary business, but I made up my income using my public adjuster's license. Okay. So you, didn't have to, you didn't have to be on site for that? No, ma'am. It's, it's all virtual. It's all virtual. So they actually... They send it, they, they uh, mail you out the laptop. They mail you all the equipment to your house. It was, it was virtual. Mm -hmm. And it was for it was for a company out of out of Texas, the a, a prime, um, prime consulting group out of Texas that I worked for. Uh-huh. And they, they pray pretty well mm -hmm. to sit here at a desk on the computer all day. Hello, Tim. I've always been interested in Justin. Okay. Yes, ma'am, Miss Um. Miss Bryant, I ain't gonna try to pronounce your first name. <laughs> Erica, why are y'all struggling with that? Her name is Erica. Erica. Okay, Miss Erica. Tammy, Tammy wasn't on when I mispronounced her name. <laughs> I know yeah. that, but you read it as Erica. Yeah, but I came in on that last part, so I said, I ain't even gonna go there. <laughs> I know you're right. You see, I backed up it's quick. Okay, I don't get offended. I just try to help people with the pronunciation. It's okay. Okay, okay. Um, Tammy, let yeah. me ask you this. You do have a great deal of, of uh, streams of income. Mm -hmm. How do you organize your day? How do oh you my decide? Gosh, I was the same thing. How do you stay organized? <laughs> How do you decide you're going to work on this? You're going to work on that? How's your day organized? Um, well, I don't get out of bed until like eight o'clock in the morning. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, my day is just um, like basically right now I'm doing a lot of notary business. Um, and so, cause my real estate is, is client based. So I'm either, if I'm working with the client, I'm either um, doing a contract. And so their house is probably not gonna close until two to three months. So I don't have to really spend a lot of time with that as far as my real estate um, business. So I do spend a lot of time with my um, notary business. I'm, you know, like I said, I, I, I'm kind of picking up since my foot is I'm back on my feet. So like my my notary business, um, I probably do about, about five of those a day. So right now I'm up to about five a day um, in my uh, real estate business, not real estate, I mean my notary business. And like I say, my janitorial business, mainly that's at night. So I have people work for me. Like tonight I'll go out and I'll train a crew tonight um, at 9.30. So um, so it's just, my schedule is pretty much open. So my, my, my careers or my job entities, they're pretty much flexible. If I have someone that want to talk about insurance policy, like I said, I'll schedule them in. Mm -hmm. But, um, I, I don't, I don't work hard. I work smart. Yeah. I don't, I don't, oh, has some questions. Yeah. In the chat. Yeah. Um, okay, Ms. Maggie has her insurance license with Prime America. What other jobs can I do? Are you asking as far as insurance, um, Maggie? Yes. Okay, so are you selling um, life and annuities with Prime America currently? No, I'm actually in the process of renewing my um, life insurance license right now. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to find, of course, other streams of income to add. For, for your insurance business, you can do um, pre-needs. You can do, um, I can um, get you the number for Great American. 
Um, you can do pre, um, that's the company that I'm registered with for pre needs. You can do that as well because you have a life insurance uh, license. Okay, that would be great. Okay, and then uh, Ms. Um, Gina, so she's asking about uh, adjusting. Like I say, I, I'm always open to share information um, about public adjusting. Um, is what's his, what's her his name? Uh, what is this, Miss Gina? What's this? What's her name right here, Miss Miss Tamika? Which one? Mine, Gina Altador is my last yeah. name. Okay. Are you are you in are you in Texas? No, I'm in Florida. Oh, okay. Okay. So you're gonna go to um to the um, Department of Insurance. What is that governor's name? So you want to know about getting your adjuster's license in Florida? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I would recommend to you is to do um, Clearwater School of Insurance. Clearwater School of Insurance. Clearwater uh, School of Insurance. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the best four hundred dollars I ever spent for my license. Out of all the licenses I have, I spent four hundred dollars for my adjuster's license. And the lady that teaches the class in Clearwater, she writes the she writes the insurance tests. So you take her class, you're exempt. You don't have to take that exam. So Clearwater School of Insurance. And where would they go? Uh, oh. What do you recommend for people that live in Texas? You're going to go to, um, they have TDSI, um, Texas Department of Insurance.org. Texas Department of Insurance.org. And your Texas license, is, it's like $50 for your Texas license. And then on their website, they tell you where you can take the, the school, take the class. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. So for Florida, Miss Tammy, is Clearwater the only school that you recommend? Because I'm in Miami, Florida. That's okay. It's virtual, honey. It's virtual. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's virtual. And she's an awesome instructor. Like I say, she writes the state insurance exam. So she's an awesome trainer. Yeah. And it's virtual. So what about if you're in another state? Like um, I'm in South Carolina. Where would I go? You're going to go to South Carolina's um, Department of Insurance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I say, I, I love public adjusting because, for example, um, I just had a, a colleague and me and her went out in um, Atlanta um, the year 2018 and we did insurance adjusting in Atlanta office. And she just came back from um, Canada. She spent three months in Canada as doing public adjusting in Canada. And so in three months, she made salary in three months, she made salary for a person that does it for a whole year, a whole year's salary in three months. You see the chat, Miss Tammy? Oh, they all in your business. <laughs> okay, it says, if you don't mind asking, why did you stop currently doing adjusting? If you, why did you stop? If you, yeah, I'm currently doing adjusting. Yeah, I just, um, the okay, job that, that, was, I, that was maybe private to you. You have another one. Oh. It said, are you married? <laughs> How do you balance your family life and business? Um, no, I am single. <laughs> I'm single ladies. <laughs> but yeah, you got I'm, but you got you got a kid over you got that you got that dog. Yeah, he yeah, he I had to lock him out. Yeah, that's my husband. No, I'm single and um, but and like I say, for me, I have one son and he's just like his mama. He has multiple streams of income as well. Yeah, he's he's a he's a, a firearm instructor. He's a first aid CPR instructor. He used to be a lieutenant on the fire department, so he has multiple streams of income as well. And he's a mobile notary, so he's he's like his mama. <laughs> and how do you um, life and business? Um, I just I just work hard to 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 support my habits, but I do vacation. I take a break. Like I said, even with my notary business, I only do it. I put the days I'm going to do it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I don't work weekends. I don't work weekends. Um, so, uh, yeah. You want you want to tell them about that cabin that you're going to invite the notary community to once we're out of COVID? Oh uh, yeah, I'm working on that. Actually, I want to invite you guys to. Um, I actually have a um, <coughs> a fractional house in um, out in um, Cabo, Mexico. So I have some. That's property. even better than coming to Florida, right? Yeah. So I have um, a fractional house. When I tell you it's beautiful, it's in Cabo, um, Cabo, Mexico, in the mountains. 
up in the hills. So we're gonna, I'm gonna look into doing that. So um, I'll pass on the information to Tamika and we'll get some dates and we're gonna bring everybody out, out to my property there in Cabo, Mexico. <laughs> okay, and then I wanna say, I'm running out of time. I got something else to say. I got something to say. I wanna talk a little bit about um, for real estate, mobile homes. Let's talk about mobile homes. Oh. Are there mobile homes in Texas? Yes. yes. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> Okay, I don't know. I don't know. I'm from Florida. 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 Mobile so, Panama City, Florida for the mobile. Yeah. So um, so let's talk about mobile homes because like when we was growing up, when people hear mobile homes, what they do, Tamika? They turn their nose up. Oh yes. Yeah. But but I have a different perspective when but it comes to have you seen some of them mobile homes? <laughs> 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 they pretty tough. Yeah, so I, I want to say this. So the um that's 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 my latest investment as far as real estate is um since COVID, I actually um I, I saw something that came across my real estate um feed and it said mobile home for seven thousand dollars. I'm like, oh, okay, that's in my price range. Okay. I saw and it was my birthday weekend and the girls was <laughs> came over. We did a hot air balloon ride. I recommend that too. And so um I said, hey, let's go look at this mobile home. It's $7,000. So we caravan down to the little mobile home park. And we looked at it. And I was like, wow, that's pretty nice. It's $7,000. But you know, it's a 50, it's a 55 and up community. Oh, OK. I'm like, oh, man. So I'm not quite, <laughs> I'm not quite there yet, OK? And so I said, OK. So then I said, hey, but I'm going to let my real estate buddy, I'll let her buy it. And so I did. I passed it on to her. And so, uh, and so we was talking to the park manager and she like, hey, you know what, I like you. I say, yeah, I like you too. She say, I got one for you too. <laughs> she said, I got one for you for $4,500. I say, yeah, I like you too. <laughs> and so she said, and um, you just fill out the contract. I'm gonna approve your contract anyway. I ain't had to be 55 and she, she let me get in there. So I bought a, a I didn't buy that particular one because the lady didn't want to sell it for 4,500. I had my money ready. <laughs> so anyway, so I end up, so like I say, in, um, in um, September, I bought into a mobile home park and I paid like $7,000 for it. And so I, it, it, when it was already fixed up, they did the floors in there, AC. It was really nice, a one bedroom house. And I have that thing rented out. So I paid seven grand and I get rental income on that. So when and so I like I got a different perspective for mobile yeah, homes. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, and that's another streams of income. You can just find some little smaller properties to invest in and use them as rental income. So what I just want to know that. What is your thing on like the tiny homes? Um yeah, those are nice too. So they're um they're they're starting to come to Florida. Okay. So I, I like the tiny homes. I like the. Uh, you know what them big old storage homes what yes you, the container the homes. container homes yeah i can tell you this in in my city i mean like wesley chapel just outside of tampa they i did an article and i'll send it to you the guy is building a container business container park mm -hmm. so he has all these business containers and he is renting them out to small businesses so he just got a big field and he has all these containers and he did small office space and they rented them for fifteen hundred dollars a month wow mm -hmm. so in other words it's a lot of means of income i, I got some notes so i'm running out of time but i do want to say this is um <laughs> i do want to say is it's just a lot of ways to um to to make income but i also want to say is that for those who don't have a brick and mortar brick and mortar place for your business i would recommend you do that because by me having a brick and mortar with COVID, I was able to get a lot of state funding, a lot of money, free money, free money. Uh, because I had a brick and mortar place for my janitorial business, any business. So let's say even your notary business, um, you don't need, you know, you can, with the COVID, you can like, what is that PPP and all that kind of stuff. I was able to get for each one of my businesses. So you got to be able, and I would say, when I say brick and mortar, because um, even if you, I just rent a small office space, it's called co-op space. Yeah. 
so you can rent just co-op space so you can have a physical building where you your mail like a PO box at a place that you can have your mail so that when these federal funds come available you can apply for them so yeah so I I've, I've, I've been blessed to get funds from a lot of these um, federal um, entities due to COVID mm -hmm. any questions I have I have uh, it's more like a request yes um, if you would get on the schedule for next year mm -hmm. to talk and you got all of these streams of income now if you would break them down mm -hmm. and talk to us so for instance we talked about you doing something on the pre-needs mm -hmm. if you could do something on how to how to start or or the just give us an outline or whatever real estate investing okay as well as the public adjuster's license okay would you be willing to give us and from you know just spend an hour with us talking about those things now that's just what i glean that that some people you know may find interesting or maybe that's what i find i'm not doing any of it i'm not looking for no stream of income uh, i'm good i'm good i'm old but now those are the ones that i was thinking about anyone else on here have any ideas of what you would like for Tammy to bring to us, to give us, you know, and it's great that she's told us all of these things that she's doing. Well, you may be interested only doing one or two things. What would that one thing be? What would that second thing be that you would like for us to, like for her to give us her expertise on? I say all of it. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. So so basically, Tammy, you will um, have a series with us next year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you know what? And I, I mean, I, I just had a list of side hustles. There's so many side hustles and yeah. whatever. But I say whatever your passion is, because what your passion is, is where you're going to spend your time and energy. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's just like uh, Etsy. I mean, I just had a whole list of just side hustles. But I'm not, like, I ain't selling nothing. I'm not doing no pyramids. I'm not, you know, I, I did the little um, Mary Kay just to have my girlfriend move up the ladder, but I ain't selling nothing. I ain't getting nobody to come in and buy nothing. I ain't doing that. So when they call me, say, Tammy, uh-uh, that's not me. I'm staying in my lane because my thing is I don't have to beg you to make money. Right. I can only teach you what has worked for me. But I ain't going to say sign up under me and you sign. Uh-uh, that's not my, I, I don't do that. So, um, okay. Oh, you see it? Say. Somebody said REI. Oh, Keisha, Keisha, Keisha what does REI mean? Return on investment. Return on investment. Really? Well, return on investment is ROI. I thought well, it was real estate investment. Oh, oh real estate okay. investing. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, like, a, yeah, real estate investing. I'm like, all right, okay. And then what was your most lucrative side hustle? Uh, well, my lu most lucrative um, mo source of income has been um, my uh, real estate investment. So I, I actually have, um, I have this little thing, this little, can you see that? How, how I made a million. I did that in real estate. So yeah, real estate has been my most lucrative um, source of income. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, um, this next project, I invested, um, I took out the money and I invested it and I'm due to make four times the return on that. So real estate has been my most lucrative income. Mm -hmm. You see that? It's a, how can we get in touch with you outside of Zoom? He said, don't call me. No, <laughs> she busy. <laughs> she gotta go clean after this. You, she done told you. Hey, they go. They gonna wait for me. <laughs> they know I'm coming. <laughs> yeah, they know I'm coming. Yeah, but uh, oh, so I'm going to. Um, I can put my email address. Oh, I have one nugget for you, ladies. For the um, this is my this is my um. 
How much do you pay for paper, Miss Liz? What you pay for your legal paper? Oh, too much. I, I, it's seldom that I can find legal paper for under 60 bucks a, a, a case. Okay, well, here's, here's the one nugget I'm going to leave with you ladies. So you going In to other words, she ain't giving you her contact information. She don't give you a nugget. Instead. No, she said she was putting it in the chat. I know, I know. I'm just messing with her. <laughs> So, uh, so for my for my um, for my legal paper a case, I pay thirty six dollars and ninety nine cents a case. Tammy, weren't you supposed to send that information to me a month ago? Yeah. But Tammy, weren't you? Uh, so what? I'm just saying. I, I, I promise I'm gonna text it to you right now. But anyway, so that's that's my giveaway. But I actually. Um, and um, $36.99 is what I pay for legal paper, and I pay $27.99 for letter. And they ship it right to my front door. $36.99 is what I get for legal paper. Do you have to have a contract with them? No, you just have to have a, um, just, I just have a, uh, you have a, you have a, a number of business? You, oh, so you have to just be a business. Just a business. Do you do mentorships? <laughs> I do. There it is. Um, now, uh, Tammy, what I'm going to ask you to do, you're going to give us the information um, for where to get this paper, legal paper for $36. But may I also ask that you put that in the, in the Facebook group? Oh, yeah, I thought I did. Yeah, I think it's just like one person because it's going to go to everyone. Okay, I got it. Hold on. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Any more questions? No, oh, there it is. My pen just went out. Um, I'm going to give you the stock number too. Here we go. Mm. So I hope um, this has blessed someone. It definitely has. I appreciate you coming on. I, I'm glad that we were able to reschedule you this year. Yes. And so this is for... Um, As for this is for the legal paper for the letter. Got it? No. <laughs> I just keep sending it to the one person. Hold on. <laughs> Wait. You keep sending it to me. <laughs> I'm getting everything. <laughs> Okay, I'm sending it to everybody. I'm going to stop doing the direct message. I'll just do it to everyone. Okay. Okay, you got it, Miss Tamika? Yes, ma'am. I'm writing it down now so I can share it. Mm-hmm. You gonna share it on Facebook, Mika? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Well, I'm glad that's able to bless someone. Well, we're sitting pretty at 8.09. So, uh, Tammy, this was amazing. This was awesome. Mm -hmm. I will be contacting you to put you a series together for next year. So don't ignore my call. <laughs> I know you were a busy lady, <laughs> but please Wait. put this in because this was amazing. I don't work after 7 p.m. <laughs> I don't work on weekends. Neither do we. We'll, we'll have to work it out. I promise you we'll work it no, out. I, but I'm just saying that to answer the question, I do have some downtime, downtime, even with my busy schedule. You know, I make time for me. A lot of people say, Tim, you still take naps. I'm like, I'm like Miss Liz. I come home and I take a nap. Yes. Absolutely. I, I feel yes. you, Miss Liz. I come Absolutely. home and I take me a nap. You got to have your nap. You got to yeah. have a nap. <laughs> I do. I do. Any more questions? 
But you know, we can, if you, because you don't, if this is too late for you because you're on a different time zone. Oh, no, no, this is perfect. We're flexible. We're flexible. No, 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 this is perfect. But I was just saying in general, like for my, any of my businesses, no, this is good for me. Yeah, because I'm usually home. After six, I'm home. <laughs> you're, you're at home in the kitchen. I need you to stay off that foot. I know it's getting better. Today was the first day I put on shoes in four months. Oh, so wow. it's getting better. It's getting better. It's getting better. So um, I just want to say Google My Business. I think Regina's, I don't know if she's still on here, but she's really big on that Google My Business page. I get a lot of my notary business off of that. Like I had two assignments today. I got, they want me to come to the hospital at 7 a.m. I charge extra. Yeah. <laughs> so Google My Business works really well for me, um, but, but I, I do really well with my notary business. My girlfriend, Jennifer Lee is on here. I trained her, yeah. You have one, oh, really? we have yeah. one more question before we uh, call it a night. Someone wants to know, uh, Miss Erica wants to know what's your mentoring fee? Uh, Miss Erica, you can call me. I have my number in the chat. And so we'll talk about what is it that you need mentorship with. Like I say, I'm always happy to share information because when I tell you God blesses me because that's what I do. I share information because I want other people to succeed and be successful. So he blesses me all the time. When I tell you, y'all better get some of this free government money. Okay, all thank right. you. All right, ladies. Thank you. Um, welcome. This is Liz. Oh, no, she didn't. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining right. us. Uh, if you haven't attended a class, our next class is workshop two and three, which is this Saturday. It'll be the last classes for the year. And then we pick back up in January because, like Miss Tammy, we take breaks. So we will be <laughs> taking a break for the whole month of December. So um, with without with that. I think we've said everything we need to say. Miss Liz is on the phone. So Miss Tammy, thank you. I will be in contact with you to Welcome. get you on the schedule for next year. This was great. Okay. Thank you everyone for joining us. See you later. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye, Good night.